Now, there's somebody here today to show you an eye-opening demonstration about the water we drink and this remarkable machine from Japan. His name is Bob Gridelli. Hey, Bobby. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, thank you, Pat. Why don't you take over? Great, I will. So I want to welcome everybody, and I'm going to go into the demonstration here, and I'm going to show you the three unique properties of this water and why it's so very special. The first property I'm going to show you is uh, what's called the ORP, which stands for the Oxidation Reduction Potential. And we're going to show you that with a meter that shows whether a liquid has a positive ORP or a negative ORP. And if it has a positive ORP, that means it's bad for you, or it's oxidizing, or aging, or rusting. We all know what that is, right? And so if it has a negative ORP, that's what makes it a powerful antioxidant. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to pour some of these liquids first. And we're going to start with the Sani. And these are, we just put together an array of liquids that most people drink, right? Did you drink any of this? Yeah. Dasani? How about Aquafina? Yes, I think I used to drink all of these. And how about smart water? Yes? I'm a holistic doctor. You're a holistic doctor, okay. I'll show you what I call it in a little bit. How about the Arrowhead sparkling water? Yes, anyone like that water? They have different flavors. That's why I kind of like those, all the flavors. Actually, this was my favorite water. It's called the Live. In a second, you'll see what I call it. <laughs> How about sports drinks, Gatorades? Yes. Oh, boy. yes, everybody like those? I used to drink a lot of sports drinks because, you know, you see athletes drinking it, so it must be good for us. Mm -hmm. How about sodas? Do any of you drink sodas? <laughs> okay, and this is just tap water. Anybody drink tap water? And then this is Kangen water. Okay, so... This is the pinpoint ORP meter. Now we're going to test the ORP of the Dasani. So notice Dasani is over 215 right now. Now we go to the Aquafina. How's the Aquafina? Two, go over 220 and climbing. How about the Smart Water? Over 230 and climbing. How about Arrowhead? Over 315 and climbing, getting worse. Alive water. This was one of my favorite ones. 400, now I call it dead water. <laughs> How about Gatorade? Any of you drink Gatorade? Mm -hmm. Like 393 and climbing. So remember, the, worse, the more positive it is, the worse it is. How about 7-Up? Now, all sodas are pretty much the same, just we use a uh, light colored. So you'll see 394 and climbing. How about the tap water? 325. Here's the star of the show, you guys. <laughs> Look at negative what? Four over ne negative 400. Wow. Now negative 426. So as you can see, when it has a negative, this is the only water that has a negative. That's why they call it negative water in Japan. That's why they use it in hospitals over there, because all the positive ones are oxidizing, aging, rusting, bad you know, internally on the body. But the negative water is neutralizing the free radicals, so that's why we want to drink this water and hydrate your body on a regular basis. Next property I'm going to show you the water is we're going to go over here and we're going to test these waters for uh, the pH of the water. So pH stands for potential hydrogen and we have a little chart here where I'm going to show you and we're going to put a few drops in these waters and we're going to show whether they are on the acidic side or the alkaline side. And we'll just put a couple drops in each one of them. We have a nice little pretty colorful display today, right? And we'll kind of stir these up real quick so you can get a better look and then I'll show each one of them. Oop, let's clean that off. Oop, let's clean it off each time. Okay. 
So let's go start here with the Dasani water, and we'll, we'll use this pH chart here and show. So the Dasani is what? Very acidic. On the acidic side, right? How about the Aquafina? Acidic. Also acidic. How about the Smart Water? A little better, but still acidic, right? How about the Arrowhead Sparkling? Oops. Very acidic. Very acidic. How about the Alive Water? That's why I call it dead water now. <laughs> how about the Gatorade? Oh, very very acidic. Also very acidic. And how about the 7-Up? Very, very acidic. Bet you didn't know you were drinking so many acidic things, did you? No. How about tap water? Neutral. So right around neutral, right? So tap water is always going to be neutral to slightly alkaline because it's federally regulated by the government. So besides, you know, the chlorine, the fluorides, they put lye in the water, which is a pH of 14, very alkaline, to raise the pH of our city water, the tap water, because if it were acidic, it would rust the pipes. So I don't think they're concerned about our pipes. They're concerned about the city pipes. So that's why it's always going to be in that range. So let's move on to the Kangen water. Now here's the star of the show. What is the Kangen water? Wow. Very alkaline, right? So with a touch of a button, we can change the alkalinity, and this one is 9.5 pH. So we all know that we should be slightly alkaline, right, our body, because we're over 75% water. Unfortunately, look what we're drinking today in the foods we're eating, in the air we're breathing. And so when you drink this water on a regular basis, just think about your bodily fluids, right? Now watch what happens. What did we just do? Just with a little of the water, we neutralize that and raise the pH of the water. We'll go to the Aquafina. Oh. Notice. What, well, how about the smart water? Oh. Notice I'm just putting in a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine when you're drinking this on a regular basis, what happened to the arrowhead water? Oh, it was struggling and then it went right back to acidity. Mm -hmm. That's because it's very acidic. Mm -hmm. Notice the alive water. Mm -hmm. No change. How about the Gatorade? Also no change. How about 7-Up? So now we'll go over to the tap water. Notice it changed pretty easily, right? So now when you're drinking this water on a regular basis, that's what it's going to help your body to do to balance your pH. Now I'm going to take the 7-Up here. Now it's already diluted, right? Watch what happens. Now think about you're drinking this on a regular basis. Watch what happens when we just add a little bit of that. Notice it takes it right back to an acidic state, just with a few drops. If you're drinking these things, ladies, and th these are all pretty much in the same range, watch the kangen water. Wow. We just destroyed the kangen water with a little bit of diluted soda. If you're drinking sodas, this is right around the pH of about 2.5, which makes it about 50,000 times more acidic if you were starting over here at the neutral point. So that's how acidic it is. And I'm just going to show you real quick. This came from Wellness Magazine. And if you, it says, what does it show the equivalent of soda is? Battery acid. It shows soda equals battery. Your battery in your car, the acid level of the battery in your car equivalent to soda. So imagine, if we want to stay on the alkaline side, you definitely don't want to drink anything like this, right? So, as you can see now, that's the second property of the water that makes Kangen water so very special and why you want to be hydrating your body on a regular basis. So, now I get to show you the third property of the water, which is microclustering of the molecules. And so regular water, like tap water, is about 15 to 20 molecule clusters, whereas kangen water is about four to six clusters, so much smaller. And you're going to get to see a visual when I show you that with these green tea bags. So this is Yamamoto green tea. It's a, a tea that I like. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, put one of these in here in the first cup. And what do you have to normally do to make tea? You have to heat the water. So we're going to take room temperature tap water. And notice what's happening. Nothing. It's not making tea, is it? That's because you have to boil the water to make tea. So we're going to take another tea bag, and we're going to take the kangen water. Notice what happens. What's happening to that tea bag? Tea. It's making tea instantly. Watch what happens when I go to pour again. 
instant tea, right? The smaller molecules are penetrating the tea bag and drawing the tea out of the tea bag. Okay, let's go to, let's take one, how about if we go back to tap water? No tea, right? So it's not a magic show, so you understand. It's just the molecules are too big to draw the tea out of there. We'll go back to Kangen water. Notice how it's drawing tea out of the tea bag. And notice this tea bag's still struggling over here, right? <laughs> so let's take it back over here and let's see if we can get tea out of it. Notice, instant tea with the Kangen water. So I think you can understand with the microclustering of the molecules being four to six clusters, much smaller, how it's drawing the tea out of the tea bag. Now imagine when you're drinking this water on a regular basis, it's hydrating the body better.